Let me tell you what never to do when you send a meeting reminder to a prospect. See what I just did there? I opened up a question that your brain wants to answer. I created a little gap between what you know and what you want to know. These are called open loops and they get and keep your attention because they make you curious. Curiosity feels like a little mental itch in your brain that you want to scratch. If you've ever got caught up in a series on Netflix, you've probably experienced open loops. I just got caught up in The Queen's Gambit, which does an amazing job of creating open loops or curiosity gaps. Not just from episode to episode, but even within each episode. The writers will share some information to keep the plot moving along, and then at the very end, like the last two minutes, they'll create another gap, and it will make you wait for that timer to go down to zero, and all of a sudden you're watching the next episode. Because I wanna find out what happens. Binge-worthy shows got me thinking about how we communicate with our prospects to ensure that they show up for our demos. We typically will send reminder messages that sound like this. Hey, Glenn, just a reminder that our demo is scheduled tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern. Here's the Zoom link. Bob. So what's the problem there? The problem is there's no open loop. Prospects don't care about your demo. They care about what your demo can do for them. Those two things might sound similar, but they are two completely different approaches. People don't want to be camera experts. They want to take better pictures. The thing is, Everyone's taking pictures today. So you have to bring forth a new idea that they may not know about that can help them avoid a problem they don't want to have, take better pictures, or possibly save a bunch of money in a way that can help them get the same job done. But you don't want to give it all away in the meeting reminder. You want to do what Netflix does. You want to create an open loop. So what I want to do is walk you through an approach and email copy that you can steal that will increase your chances of people showing up for your meetings and not ghosting you. So to set context, we're going to use this in the context of my business. And as you may know, I help salespeople create emails and make phone calls that increase their chances of starting conversations with people they want to get in front of. But I don't want to tell people everything that I'm going to do in the meeting reminder. I want to create a little curiosity. In fact, I want to open up an information loop that's going to make them curious. Uh, These are often called fascinations in the copywriting world. One of the most famous ones is what never to eat on an airplane. Like that's going to make you curious, especially if I'm flying. Like what is it that I'm not supposed to eat? Um, the news does this really well too, right? There's there's something wrong with your peas, news at 11. Wait, I'm, I'm about to eat peas. What's wrong with my peas? Again, information gaps. So let's see what this looks like with regards to a meeting minder where we can create that same curiosity. So subject, soon. Hi, Kim. At precisely 3 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, you're gonna see a top secret approach SDRs are using to write cold emails that motivate prospects to respond. SDRs at company X have used these to boost their response rates. Since you sell to directors of demand gen, you're going to see specific examples of how this applies to them. Chat soon. P.S. Is there anyone else you'd like to have join? This is for a sales consultant, but you can apply the approach for your prospects. So let's break it down a little bit and discuss the psychology of this 
so that you can leverage it for your prospects. So first, it focuses on what the prospect can do better, not a demo. People don't want demos. They don't want braces. They want the confidence that comes from having the perfect smile. So in this context, the desired outcome is motivate more prospects to respond. I'm using the word top secret or unconventional or lesser known or unusual approach. Those are words that are going to create a little curiosity. What is this top secret thing? What is this unconventional thing? What is this lesser known thing? that other SDRs are using to be able to boost response. What are, what are teams like me doing to level up in this area? Uh, people always are going to be curious about what similar people to them are doing to get better outcomes and results. The next sentence is, since you sell to directors of demand gen, you'll see examples of how to apply this tactic to them. So this is very specific and crispy around their target audience. What does this email look like that he's talking about, targeted to my audience. Again, I'm not telling them about the email, I'm teasing the email. So I'm focusing on what they can do better and I'm creating a gap between what the prospect knows, they know they should be emailing, and what they wanna know, like what is this technique? These open loops in meeting reminders reduce no-shows because brains crave closure. The PS line, is there anyone else you'd like to join? The intent behind that line is that the more people that accept the meeting request, the higher likelihood it is that the meeting will actually happen. What's the takeaway? Every interaction you have with a prospect is an opportunity for you to push them away, leave them feeling flat, or pull them towards you. Create curiosity gaps. Don't tell people the whole story. Tell them part of the story.